let's look at the text link analysis extraction. In essence, this analysis uh, looks for relationships uh, that are defined within the template between types and not just terms. So it's a broader uh, analysis, uh, in a sense an ontological analysis that allows types, collections of terms that fit into a type to be analyzed to see if they occur together. And this can provide a lot of useful information. The uh, output from these, now we're only looking at the first 100 documents, so we don't see any of the uh, specific Enron terms that we'll be looking at a, a little bit later, but you can see that it's, it's creating connections between types. And if we took a look at this one in particular, it tells us which concepts are occurring uh, in both, uh, in each of the types. And we can take a look at the uh, relationships, both for the concepts and the types. And we can uh, also create other connections. And th the output from this is uh, simply, if we desire to use it, is to add it to the categories that we've already built in the category building process. So we'd be adding those text link analysis. So let's, let's add this one. Create a new category, and it tells us that there is a category created for it. And if we went back and looked at the categories, we would see the, that rule that's been uh, applied. Next, let's look at the cluster processing analysis. And this gives us another way to look at the data and to derive useful information that we can add to the categories, which will become part of the output nugget. And again, we can tell the system here what we want included once we're ready. And there are parameters we can change, but we'll leave them in the way they are right now. We can uh, generate those clusters. The system will analyze it specifically, uh, specific to the, the cluster analysis. And the cluster analysis is looking for relationships between actual terms within documents. And once it does that, we'll have a, a set of a table with the fields that are shown on the left filled in. And basically, again, you get a pretty good view. And, and if you're looking at specific issues, if one of the terms is an issue that was a the, the term appeared to be uh, relevant to a particular issue you can see what terms were being used with it uh, and then once you once you have that you can if if all of these terms were relevant from the collection of documents and you wanted to tell the system look when these all these terms occur together I want you to make note of it and uh, and and reflect that in the in the nugget output you could choose to save all of these and again, add them to a category, create a new category, and that also gets saved. So we now have the text link analysis category saved and a cluster rule saved. Note that you can get cluster views and these can be very helpful. You can see what clusters of words are occurring together and uh, their relationship. And there's a, there's a lot of different ways to look at the data here that we want to uh, in addition, once you, in both the text link uh, analysis nodes and in this node, it, as well as in the term node, there is the ability to uh, take a look at the, the actual documents where those uh, terms are occurring to see if they make sense. And you can see one of them right here, and these are the terms, and this is in, in fact a spreadsheet. So this will give you an idea of what's occurring in those spreadsheets. Okay, now that we've done all that, we can go back and take a look at our basic screen and we can see that our, our uh, category output is reflecting the, the basic categories we created, the text link analysis categories we created, and the clustering categories we created. And all of them can now be used to generate the output nugget simply by hitting this. If we then, for right now, minimize this, we then see that nugget in our in our palette and we can pull that in to the uh, to the stream and now we would connect our 100 uh, files to that path and we can create an output 
and we can take a look at that path nugget and uh, tell and, and show how we can we can define the output that we want. Let's open up the nugget and take a look. First we can see the categories that were derived. They can be deselected for particular applications. Uh, we can choose whether we want the scoring to be done using the categories as separate fields or if the category should be listed as records. So first let's take a look at uh, as fields. We can decide what value we want for uh, within the cell for each field and uh, we can execute that. And what that will do is push through those 100 documents, free text documents, through that nugget and generate a flat table which will contain information about each of the uh, documents. And there you can see it. Each of the categories gets its own field with the value denominated within it. And this is, uh, they can then be used by analytical software systems and, uh, and various algorithms. We could also, and sometimes this is very useful, generate the same information but in, in uh, the format of records so that the, each document may have multiple record listings and uh, the number of fields is, is obviously greatly re reduced. And once that's done we can take a look at it and as you can see you're seeing some of that information now in this format. Uh, the second doc ID is generated by the system. And in essence it's giving you all that information but it's running down for each document multiple entries. Uh, all uh, derived based on the rules set forth in the in the uh, nugget that we generated. Now I've uh, attached another uh, node, the text link analysis node, which is a text-based node that can also be used to generate very useful information from the documents. And here we're telling the system to, to locate the, the uh, files in a, in a path. Uh, importantly we've We've uh, told the system to use that same Enron template that we had developed and looked at a, a moment ago. Uh, we've told the system not to extract uh, non-linguistic entities. And we can generate some output from this. And this can be a little bit different. Uh, and this can be added to the output from the, from the uh, text mining nugget to uh, improve uh, the analytics uh, that, are, that are applied to it. But here we can take a look and see what's being output here. And here we have the co uh, concept, it's type, concept type, and you can see uh, all this is generated. You can change, uh, modify, or add text link rules so that there could be quite a number of, of uh, concepts of particular types that have to be found within a document for there to be a hit. But at the end of the day, the system will give you some output and tell you in context where that term appeared. Uh, once you have this flat table, the modeler uh, workbench, the palette, can use uh, can can handle this uh, data very easily because it does uh, use uh, discrete inputs as well as free text, and we'll see that in a minute. So let's take a look at a more directed, practical application that utilizes both uh, discrete uh, data in the form of metadata from the Enron document set as well as the documents themselves. It, on the screen here is a, is a stream that was created that allows us to input the Enron metadata including the to from CC subject line and so forth and to extract uh, useful information that can then be used to direct uh, text mining. First we have a, a super node which is a collection of, of, uh, of nodes uh, this super node is uh, extracting all the uh, entity inf information from the to from CC line as well as providing the subject line for analysis. The select node is selecting out uh, three terms, FASTAL, LJM, and Raptor. All three uh, terms are infamous from the uh, Enron uh, matter and uh, it's extracting any uh, documents that contain in their subject line any reference to any or, or all of those items. And the first thing we can do is we can see a, an output table to tell us what is generated when we do that. And we can see this again is now discrete data. Uh, here's the subject line. Uh, here's the from, uh, the to, and the cc. 
and uh, we can see that there's uh, a good number of documents uh, where within the set those items have been discussed. Now that's useful, you, we know there's an output, but to really uh, get a better idea of of what we're looking at in terms of players, and this can be very useful in uh, both uh, investigations and, and deposition preparation. We can take a look using a web node at the uh, collection of people who are in fact uh, discussing those matters. So here we have the, the assortment. Uh, we have it broken down into clusters. Uh, here's the subject line, private equity transaction in LJM2 from A, a Fastow. And these are the people that were involved in communications with that subject line. This is the subject line that says fast out rumor and people that were uh, involved in that. These are Raptor discussions, including down here, more LJM and the people involved in those discussions. So of course this would give you an idea of who the players were, the custodians, the people involved in discussions, and they might be followed up upon in terms of their document sets. So that's very useful information for that purpose.